Okay, so this is my camera. It's a Nikon D3200, and it's a pretty nice camera. It's only entry level, but I've had it for a few years now, and I've had lots of fun learning how it works and how to use it. A camera forms the image the same way as your eye does. You have a convex lens and a sensor. And so the image comes in, a point of light comes in, and comes parallel to the lens, and then it's directed into the focus, and then another point comes in through the focus, and it's directed parallel, and you form that point down here. And since the point starts up here and goes to down here, it's inverted. And when you have a bunch of points coming in and forming an image back over here. So, if you have the lens too far away or too close, these, the focus point will not be on the sensor, but behind or in front of it. So then each point of light, which used to be a point, will now be a big blur, which is called bokeh, or bokeh, boku, I don't, who knows, dude. So you don't want that. So what you want to do is you need to move the lens closer or farther away so that it focuses the image to a point. So with your eyes, you just change the shape of your lens to make it bend the rays more or less. But with a camera, you can't do that because it's solid glass. So what you need to do is, with most DSLRs, you twist front of the camera and it'll move this lens forward and backwards and focus the images on this point. Okay, so now that you've focused your image, you're going to want to frame it. So there's two types of lenses. There are stationary lenses and there are variable zoom lenses. Um, stationary lenses have a fixed focal length and the focal length is the distance from the lens to the image sensor on the camera. So the most common stationary lens is a 35mm because it strikes a pretty good balance between zooming in but still being wide enough to capture a lot of detail. And then the other kind of lens is a variable zoom lens. And what these are is they can change the focal length to zoom the image in and out. So let me tell you how that works. Okay, so my camera has a, a kit variable zoom lens that comes with a camera of 18 to 55 millimeters. So we have the image sensor here on the camera and we have the lens here. So um, at its lowest position, it's 18 millimeters away. And if I want to zoom in, I twist the outside of the lens and some fancy dancing mechanics pull the lens farther away from the sensor. And what this does is it makes the image bigger. And um, due to a very complicated set of lenses, there is not just one lens in a camera lens, there are many different lenses. Pulling this lens away makes the image bigger while still keeping focus. So you pull this lens away and it makes the image bigger. But the sensor is still the same size. So since there is infinite detail in light, all you've done is made the image bigger and made the sensor crop less of the image. So that means that your sensor is now the same resolution but it's farther into this infinite resolution of light so you get more detail. So when you want to get a lot of detail in something that's farther away, you're going to want to zoom into it. Then that gives you more detail. But um, sadly, you can't do that on an iPhone or most smartphones because they have a fixed focal length um, to make the lens actually fit in the camera. So when you zoom in on an iPhone, you're not actually it's not actual optical zoom. The camera digitally stretches the image to make it bigger, so you lose resolution when you zoom in. Okay, so now that we have focused and cropped our image, how does the camera take that image and turn it into a digital file that you can view on your computer or your phone? So here we have a really zoomed in image of a camera sensor, and basically, each pixel is a 2x2 two two square from the sensor. So each pixel has a red, a blue, and two green sensors. So that's why in movies and TV we um, use green screens because cameras are most sensitive to green light because they have twice as many green sensors as they have red or blue. Um, so basically, how each pixel works is it takes the average of all the light rays that hit those sensors. So each sensor resonates with a specific color, blue, green, or red, and it creates an electrical current. And that electrical current is stronger or weaker depending on how bright the light that enters it is. So basically, um, how it works, it works just like a color palette, you know, red, green, and blue, and it 
combines all the different frequencies of light that come in here. The amount of red, the amount of blue, and the amount of green, and their intensities, and how much more red there is than green, and creates a color for that pixel. And that combined with all these pixels in the sensor creates an image. So a little extra tidbit about um, pixels, if you've ever heard the phrase megapixel, um, it's pretty common, you know, I think an iPhone has something like 13 megapixels. Um, my camera has 24 megapixels, because um, it's the best. Uh, so basically, a megapixel is a million pixels. So my camera sensor has 24.1 million pixels in it, and each pixel has four sensors in it. So somehow, in this tiny little amazing technology that I'm looking into right now, there are 24 million times four sensors that can create an electrical current that can turn it into a file. Dude, technology is crazy. Okay, so now that your camera has taken this image and turned it into a file, how do you see the image? So, so most DSLRs have two screens on them. There's the digital screen, and then there's the viewfinder. So let's start with the viewfinder because it's a bit simpler. Um, when your camera is in rest mode, there is the sensor, and there is a mirror, and another mirror. That basically creates a periscope. So the image comes in, hits this mirror, hits this mirror, mirror, hits this mirror, and comes in through a little place right here on the top of the camera called the viewfinder. And this way, when you're focusing or setting your image up, you see real life. You see full resolution. And this is cheaper because instead of having to make another little screen up here that processes the image full time and displays it on an optical screen or a digital screen, you see an optical image of what is really there. And it's also higher resolution because it's the real world. Um, so that's pretty simple, you know, just reflecting light. Um, but Next, to actually see the image that you've already taken, not a live image, you have a digital screen on the front of the camera, and this is the same as the screen you have on a computer or a phone, and basically um, it has a bunch of pixels again. But this time, the pixels are, they send out light instead of receiving light. So each pixel has a little red, a little green, and a little blue LED on them and they will shine those LEDs at different intensities and different amounts of light to create an image. And again, it's the same as a color palette. If you want to make blue, you shine the blue LED and none of the others. Green, you shine the green LED and none of the others. If you want to make a gray color or something, you would only shine some of the LEDs at lower intensities and you just create images through different intensities of the three primary colors. So the screens that you view the image out with are um, much less complicated and also much easier to produce because the screens only have 400 pixels across the top and 300 down the side, which is only like not even one megapixel. So screens are much easier to make, but they need to send out energy, which is more, which requires more electronics than receiving something. So they have to be lower resolution, they can't be 24 megapixels, sadly, but we are getting there. Okay, so that's how your camera works. You, the image comes in, it's focused, and it's cropped, it hits the sensor, the sensor turns it into electrical signals, those electrical signals are turned into ones and zeros, which becomes a file, which you can then view on your camera screen or your computer screen. That's how your camera works. I already said that, kind of repeating myself now.